Namaste. So today is the day formerly known as Christmas. <laughs> but to us, every day is Christmas because every day that one is in self-realization, the Son of God is born. Huh? And he will be born again. <laughs> Actually, God, or Brahman, is always sending his emissaries and representatives to us. It's not a special thing. It's constant. But we have to be aware of it. We have to be open to it. And when we encounter this knowledge, we have to take it seriously. So that's the reason we're suffering, that we haven't listened to the representatives of the Absolute who have been sent to us to help us, to get us out of this suffering. So I want to uh, review a sutra that is given by the Buddha about this, the end of suffering and how we can attain it. I'm just going to read the conclusion, the last couple of verses, but the whole sutta is linked in the video description, and really you should read the whole thing. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. We'll reply. Sabbasova panajatiya asati jati nirodha apinukho Jaramaranang panyayetati no hetang bhante sadhu sadhu bhikkave eva metang bhikkave netang anyata sadhahata metang bhikkave adhimuchata nikanka etahota nibhichikitcha Ese vanto dukhasati. Buddha, when there are utterly no desires, no objective consciousness, no name and form, no six sense bases, no contact, no feeling, no craving, no clinging, no becoming, no birth, with the cessation of birth, would aging and death be discerned? Monks, no, venerable sir. Buddha, good, good, bhikkhus. It is exactly so and not otherwise. Place faith in me about this, bhikkhus. Resolve on this. Be free from perplexity and doubt about this. Just this is the end of suffering. So what is Buddha talking about here? Well, he's talking about his core teaching, Paticca Samuppada, or Dependent Arising. We have a whole series on it that gives all the details regarding the 12 different stages. But basically, it's the process of becoming. It's how we come into this world and create an individual self. And, of course, the whole thing begins from desire. Desire is the cause of suffering. No desire, no suffering. Very simple. This has always been true, and it will always be true. That as soon as we let go of desires, suffering disappears. But with the arising of desire, there is also the arising of suffering. Now, they may appear to be separated in time, but the connection is always there and it's inevitable. I mean, the oldest story in the world, Genesis, is a story of desire. The serpent misleads Eve and she influences Adam to eat the fruit of knowledge. The fruit of the tree of knowledge is desire. I know there's something out there that I want. 
And so I start to create a future where I have that thing and work toward that future. Seems natural, right? But the problem is, by making a future in which I am complete, I create a present in which I am incomplete, where I am lacking the object of my desire. That's suffering, because now I feel incomplete. And the more desires I have, the more incomplete I feel. You know, this is why adolescents are so miserable. You ask any teenager if you can get them to tell you the truth. <laughs> They're miserable. And this is why a teen suicide is a huge issue nowadays, especially with social media, where people are advertising their triumphs, their victories and their successes. And then one compares oneself with that and one feels lacking, incomplete. So many desires are born. And therefore, there's pain, there's suffering, dukkha. Dukkha means not only suffering, it means unsatisfactoriness and incompleteness. Unsatisfactory means even if we get the object of our desire, there's always something wrong with it. It's never perfect. We're always going to feel dissatisfied. Huh? And again, incomplete. So that leads to the next desire and the next and the next. It's an endless chain. And that's why it's called samsara, the round of birth and death. It's a cycle, a spiral, a vicious circle. And the only way to break it is to uproot desire. Because that is the root of the tree of becoming, which inevitably leads to suffering, old age and death. And it might not be the old age and death of the body. It might be the old age and death of a particular personality, a particular identity, a particular view of self. But all views of self and all egotistic identities based on desire are false. And the reason they're false is that they are outside of the here and now. They're based in the past on memories and they look toward the future based on desires. So we become split between who we really are right now and who we want to become in the future. So this starts the whole process of becoming, which begins with desire, then consciousness, objective consciousness, duality, huh? I and thou, this and that, the way I am now and the way I want to be. And then that creates name and form. Name and form creates six sense bases, the five physical senses plus the mind. And those lead to contact. Contact leads to feeling, pleasant, unpleasant, or neither. Feeling leads to craving. Craving leads to clinging. Clinging leads to becoming. Becoming leads to birth and birth leads to old age and death. So the Buddha explains this all in detail in the sutta. You should really click that link and go read it. But what it means is that as soon as we give up desire, as soon as we accept ourselves as we are in the here and now, then the cause of suffering is uprooted. And just like a plant, when the root is cut, the rest of the plant dries up 
and does not regrow. As long as the root is there, even if we cut the whole plant, it's still going to grow back. And what is the root of all desire? The desire to be an individual. The desire to be a separate personality, a separate ego, an individual identity. This is ignorance. Why is it ignorance? Because it ain't true. Just look at our situation. We live in a thin film of water and atmosphere around a rocky planet. And within that thin film, we have freedom of movement only on the surface. And in that environment, in that biosphere, every moment we have to breathe or we lose consciousness and die. Every few hours we have to drink something or in a few days we die of thirst. Every few hours we have to eat something or we die of hunger. We need companionship, association, or we die of loneliness, of stress. We need some work, but not too much work. Otherwise, we die of overwork, or we die of disease, or something else. In any case, when one is born, death is inevitable. It may come from this cause or that cause, but it's going to come. Therefore, the desire to be an individual is the cause of all suffering. And, of course, once that desire is established, so many other desires grow from it, like creepers that a vine puts out and take root and sprout independently. So the only solution, the only thing that actually works is to give up the desire to be an individual and merge with the whole. After all, as I just pointed out, the body cannot exist without air, water, food, sunshine, association, society, and so many other things. So. The idea of an individual is actually illusory. We are connected with everything. So if we are uh, dependent on the environment to live, how can we say that we're an individual? How can we say that we're independent? Huh? It's wrong. And then we want to become dependent on relationships with others. And this also leads to suffering because the very idea of an other is wrong. It's incorrect. Just as the idea of self as an individual is an illusion, so the idea of another individual is illusion. No wonder relationships are so complicated and problematic. So go and read the Sutra and go and watch our series on dependent origination. And then if you have any questions about what you have to do to be free from suffering, post them in the comments and we'll be happy to explain. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.